9-11 hijackers. Uh, some of its uh, imams have included uh, Anwar al-Awaki, uh, who was this uh, high-level al-Qaeda recruiter, we think, uh, who ministered not only to the 9-11 hijackers, but uh, to the Fort Hood mass murderer and perhaps even to the, uh, to the Christmas bomber, um, Mr. Abdul Muttalib, who tried to take that plane down over Detroit on Christmas. So it, it's, a, it's a legal quandary, um, but much more uh, to the point, uh, it, it really is a, a dubious exercise of judgment for the uh, mm -hmm. State Department to be praising this particular mosque. Absolutely. Andy, it wasn't until I read your book that I saw the parallels between socialism and Islam. You draw out the fact that both systems, both worldviews, both isms, if you will, do not celebrate individual liberty, the autonomy of the individual, personal freedom, personal liberty, and that they're strange bedfellows, that the one can necessarily accompany the other and cause it to grow. Am I right? Yeah, and, you know, I, I've been asked, Janet, it's funny, people have said to me, are you saying that people on the left want to impose Sharia law? And, I'm, you know, no, that's not what I'm saying. This is an alliance. It's not a merger. Uh, but they do, despite the fact that they have many important differences, like women's rights and uh, abortion and, uh, you know, a number of other uh, big-ticket items that we hear talked about all the time, on many very significant matters, including the ones that you've just laid out, um, they are largely in symmetry. I think most people in the United States, for example, don't realize that Islamist uh, ideology uh, is virulently anti-capitalist. Uh, in fact, uh, if you read Saeed Qutb, who is the, uh, uh, really the, the chief theoretician of modern Islam, he, he was executed in the late 1960s, but his influence is profound and lives on, uh, he actually thought um, uh, the communists, had it uh, had it much more right than the uh, than the capitalists do. His problem with communism was that it, it uh, ignored the uh, spiritual side of life and tried to explain everything by materialism. But he agreed with the communist critique of uh, capitalist economic systems, uh, and that I think is would be an eye opener to most people if we have actually ever acquainted ourselves with the beliefs of our enemies. Exactly. Andy, I want to say also that the book is just replete with information, so forgive me as I hop, skip, and jump through various points because you develop them much more than time affords me in our conversation today. I want to have a little bit of conversation that represents boots on the ground, and I want to talk about some groups by name. I remember being in Amman, Jordan, and outside my hotel room there were 15,000 members of the Muslim Brotherhood chanting, Death to America, Death to Israel. It was disconcerting then, but it's even more disconcerting when you realize that factions of that organization have taken up residency here in the United States. Talk to me about that. Yeah, the Muslim Brotherhood has really meticulously built an Islamist infrastructure in the United States. They began doing it in the early 1960s, and we're now really witnessing the third generation of activists um, who are marching through our institutions, our, uh, our academy and the, and the media for sure. Um, they began with the Muslim uh, Students associations, which now have about 600 chapters throughout the United States, the, Nas the North American Islamist Trust uh, and the uh, Islamic Society of North America, which is probably the latter, is probably now the most important Islamist organization in the United States. Uh, by combination, they probably control the property and the content uh, in about 80 percent of the 2,300 plus mosques in the United States. The Muslim American Society is the quasi-official presence of the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States, and probably the most sophisticated um, uh, gambit they had was the uh, development of CARE, the Council yes. on American Islamic Relations. Um, when that happened, uh, the the it, it was in the mid 1990s, and the existing uh, Brotherhood tentacles were all I identified as. Uh, being very pro-Hamas, which had become a uh, designated terrorist organization under American law. So they needed an organization that could be supportive of the cause but wasn't so readily identified with the cause. And they developed CARE to be both media savvy and to travel under the uh, heading of a civil rights organization rather than an Islamist organization. And, of course, our, our opinion elites uh, bought that hook, line, and sinker to the point where whether it's the media, the government, or the academy, uh, CARE is repeatedly referred to as if it were a mere civil rights organization rather than what it is, 
which is an Islamist organization and a tentacle of the Muslim Brotherhood. Mm. There's so much in the book. Let me ask you, <clears throat> excuse me, Andy, in the minute that remains, so that we end on a positive note, so people don't feel overwhelmed and say, hey, there are giants in the land and I'm just a grasshopper. What is our perspective? What is our, what is our responsibility here? If there is this incremental mission creep, if you will, for this divine directive of the Islamist, how do we prohibit that in the United States? Well, I think a, a couple of things. Number one, we have to take heart in the fact that, um, you know, the Islamists and the leftists disagree on many important things. Uh, I, I'm sure they're not happy to be in a, a, a sort of a, a, a arrangement like this together. The only thing that draws them together is that the freedom culture is so strong. They need to combine to try to overcome it. Um, we need to take heart in that because that's our strength. Uh, and I think we need to, to stop waiting for government to figure this out. Uh, this is going to be like immigration reform or, uh, you know, closing Gitmo. It's one of these big issues that the American people are going to have to drag the government to the right place, not the other mm. way around. Not the other way around. What a great note to end on. Thank you, Andy, so very much. There's so much more to the book, friends, and I want to draw you to our website so you can learn more. In the market with JanetParshall.org, you'll see Andy's face, a short bio. You can even click through and read more about Andy and his very, very prestigious career. But also you can see his brand-new book called The Grand Jihad. It is replete with footnotes. It is completely documented, and it is a wake-up call, so I commend it to you. And I thank you so much for joining us. Send us an email on suggestions of topics you'd like us to cover at JanetParshall at Moody.edu. That's JanetParshall at Moody.edu. And we'll see you next time right here on In the Market.